video we're looking at the second section in Romans chapter 8 and I called this section Children of God. As always I do encourage you to, just to take some time to read through this passage yourself before you continue uh, watching this video and spend some time praying asking God to help you to understand his word better. If you are new to this channel then I encourage you to subscribe so that you'll get notifications for future videos and share this video with others who you think might find it helpful. This section starts with the important word, therefore. Whenever you see the word therefore, you need to ask what's the therefore, therefore. And in this case, it's pointing us back to remind us of what we've seen in the previous section. But it's also pointing us back, I think, to what we've seen in chapters 1 to 7, but specifically in chapter 7, where Paul is speaking as a Christian man about his ongoing struggle with sin. And he, he even says at the end of chapter 7, What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? But then he goes on to speak about the wonders of the gospel. He says, Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. And then chapter 8 begins with those glorious words, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the verses we looked at in the previous video highlighted the difference between the flesh and the spirit and this section picks up on that a, a bit uh, obviously in this first section we see Paul is speaking by about the flesh again uh, but he continues speaking about what life by the spirit should look like verse 11 just before our section says and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So he's saying God's spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, that powerful spirit is living in us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. And this section is spelling out in part what this obligation is. And he said it's not to live according to the flesh, we see he contrasts here two ways of living again like we saw in last week's passage so it's not to live according to the flesh because if you live according to the flesh you will die but the alternate way of living is by the spirit to put to death the misdeeds of the body so we have an obligation to put to death the misdeeds of the body uh, to deal with our sin but we do that by the Spirit. And he said, if you do that, you will live. So one of the great things we see in this verse is, if by the Spirit you put to death. If by the Spirit you put to death. So you put to death the misdeeds of the body, but you do it by the Spirit. We aren't powerless in our battle against sin. Uh, the Spirit within us, the same powerful Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, is in us, as he says in verse 11. Therefore, we have this obligation by the Spirit to put to death the misdeeds of the body. Now, at this point is where this section becomes incredible. We saw in verse 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that is glorious news in and of itself. But the news gets even better in this section because Paul starts to speak about us as children of God. So by the Spirit, we are children of God. That is an incredible thing. The Spirit of God is the one leading us and telling us that we are children of God. By the Spirit, as God's children, we can cry out, Abba, Father. Now this is truly glorious news. From verse 1, there's no condemnation. So I'll, I'll, we don't stand condemned because of our sins. But the wonder of the gospel is that we are no longer standing as if we were in a court before a judge. We now come to God as our Father. So it's a home setting. And this Abba, Father, is an Aramaic term. It's the same word that Jesus used for his Father in Mark, 4, um, Mark 14. Paul uses it again in Galatians 4. Uh, verse 4 and following 
and it's a it's a very personal term the way that uh, children would call their their father dad daddy and it's an incredible thing that those who are led by the spirit are children of god by the spirit we are able to cry out to our god abba father so again flowing out of verse 11 which ends by saying that the spirit lives in you if the spirit of god lives in you Paul is saying you have an obligation to put sin to death because you are now a child of God. And as God's child, we don't approach God fearful. Do we see here? So that you, you, you received a spirit that does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. So we don't approach God fearful because of our sin. Because of Jesus, there is now no condemnation. Our sin has been dealt with. But we do carry on sinning, as we saw in chapter 7. And so we don't approach God with the fear, fearful because of our sin. Rather, we approach God as our loving Father who has dealt with our sin. And more than that, He's also secured our eternal inheritance. Because in verse 17, we're told, And now, if we are children, then we are heirs of God. So not just children, but heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Is this if statement. If indeed we share in his sufferings. Now, sufferings is something that Paul is going to uh, flesh out more in the next section. So... Look out for the video next week where we look at more about what it means to share in Christ's sufferings. But then he goes on to say, in order that we may also share in his glory. So if the Spirit of God lives in us, we have this obligation to put sin to death because we are now children of God. As God's children, we don't approach God fearful because of our sin. Rather, we approach God as our Father who has dealt with our sin and by His Spirit continues to work in us. By the Spirit, He helps us to put to death the misdeeds of the body. And also, by His Spirit, verse 16, testifies that we are God's children. The Spirit in us reminds us that we are children of God. And now as children, we are also co-heirs with Christ glory is coming. So we don't approach God fearful because of our sin. We approach him as our loving father who has dealt with our sin and who has guaranteed our eternal inheritance. The, the wonders of verse 1 to 11 are incredible. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We've moved, we've been moved from the realm of sin and death into the realm of the spirit who gives life. But even better than that, We've also been moved into God's family, adopted as God's children. Our adoption papers have been signed by the blood of Christ. And we will one day share in Christ's glory. And we can keep going because by the Spirit, we are being led by the Spirit. The Spirit will help us to put sin to death. So we do need to take sin seriously. We can't just say, oh, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, I now don't stand condemned, so I can go on living as I please. No, if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, we should be becoming sanctified. That is a gradual growing righteousness as the Spirit works in us until that day when we receive our inheritance in glory one day with Jesus. So in Paul's thinking, he hasn't left chapter 7 behind. He's still real about our struggle against sin. But our struggle against sin doesn't occur in a courtroom before a judge. Rather, it occurs within a family before a father who will not reject us. It is one thing for the guilty to be acquitted, but it's quite another for the guilty to be adopted into God's family and given the full rights of family members. And that is part of the wonder of what we see in these verses and as you dig further into these verses I pray that you would stand amazed at the fact that we get to be children of God we can cry out by the Spirit Abba Father 
that same closeness of relationship that Jesus enjoyed with his Father. That's ours because of Jesus, because there is now no condemnation for us because he's paid for our sin. We are now his children able to cry out, Abba, Father, knowing that glory is coming. And something that a reality for now is that our lives now will be, we will face suffering. That's the pattern now, suffering now, glory later. But even in the face of our ongoing sinfulness and our ongoing sufferings, we are already truly adopted children of God, part of God's family, with all the benefits and privileges, but we're not yet the recipients of our final inheritance, which is coming in glory. But by the Spirit, we can keep going. And that is what Paul is encouraging uh, the Roman original readers, and that's what he is encouraging us with. We need to keep going, trusting in Jesus. There is no condemnation for us, but we need to continue to put to death the misdeeds of the body, crying out to God, trusting in his Spirit to help us until that day when we are with him in glory. Well, God bless as you dig in further, and I pray that this passage would truly encourage you, challenge you, and change you, and that that would be true of those who you teach it to as well. Well, God bless you.